up because there won't be much tension on it. Um, and then the ground wind is still moving this way, so I would anticipate we'll just slide right off the end of it. Okay. to move that three four hundred feet and go all the way up and when you, when you have that uh, ascent initiated then go ahead and pull the earth okay Colorado Springs Tower hot air balloon November 74008 hot air I'll just tell them I'm taking off west. Yeah, first of three out of here. I am first of three west of you heading south. And that's all I got to do? Yep, that's good. Okay, so the challenge today will be to maintain something between three and 400 feet a minute. Okay. And the goal that I have in mind is I'd like to get all the way up to about 9,000 feet. Okay. a little different the burner or is it just me uh it didn't to me okay. you feel like it does well, i can't tell with my ears or wow that's okay, so 6700 and now we're gonna i feel some some wind changing it's hard to know what's going on so right now we've got 156 at 13. Kind of towards the glen at this track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it looks breezy on the lake there. The two Adventures balloons are to our uh, east, and I'm guessing. I don't know, but sometimes they like to take off somewhere right down in here. Uh, right there. Oh, yeah, you're right, I see the wind. So that tells me, if they both took off there, that, that, that he was able to go up and box around, and now he's between the runways. And uh, so if we keep climbing, we should be able to do something similar. Okay, 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think they were doing some kind of construction. Oh yeah, for days they made. Didn't they make one of them land before they crossed the runway? Uh, yeah, they did. You're right. And I guess that was because they only had one runway to work with. So soonish, I would anticipate that we'll see a turn here. I feel like we're in that. We're feeling that wind shear, but we're not seeing the change yet. Ascent gets away from you real quick. Yeah. Because the balloon naturally wants to stabilize, right? right. And it's particularly difficult as you're going through different levels and shears and things like that. Okay, so now we're starting to bleed some speed up. Yeah. But that was the motivation I had to get up fairly quickly, is I don't want to be 10 miles down the road while we're trying to figure it out. Right. You know? Because if we can get a direction that'll take us like that direction, like Adventures did, then... Uh, we can really extend the duration of the flight. Looks like Corey's inflated there. He's the only one that moved down there, right? Yep. He probably moved because of what the pie ball did, not, you know, because it just went straight south. Right, yeah, the, it, yeah. his concern was that the pie ball went south and, and he felt like it almost even turned right. Okay. Yeah, wind in my face pretty good now. Me too, but we're dropping down to six knots, but we're also turning what almost right. due south. I'm curious how this is gonna unfold, but. So assuming that we get in a spot that I like it, which I, I think chances are pretty good, my intention is that we're going to continue this ascent. We're going to hopefully get this turned back to the north, northeast kind of thing. Um, and like I say, you'll feel all this wind in our face. But one of the things that's important to note is at 400 feet a minute, you don't have time to let the balloon adjust to wind laters. So there is a, a capability where you can actually just blow through a wind and never know it's there. Um, but like I say, I have a goal of getting up to about 9,000. And then... Looks like we don't have to worry about this runway at all. But that runway will be a little heavier. And then, my goal is that once we're in a space we like, I would like to do a terminal velocity descent, okay? Um, and now we've got a north track. I mean, almost two north, that's perfect. So the intention of the terminal velocity descent, um, from a training perspective, it accomplishes a couple of things. The first goal is it is designed to simulate that you have lost fire. And the idea of... If it takes you a really long time to get your burner relit, how will the balloon behave? Um, so that you get a feel for that, so that in the midst of... Your burner going out and trying to light the pilot light, which is stressful enough, you're not also experiencing the behavior of the balloon for the very first time. Because in this balloon, and in a lot of balloons these days, uh, it will be really stable up to somewhere on the order of about 700, maybe 800 feet a minute now. After that, it starts to become a, a little bit more adventuresome. And these, the behavior what we would expect is once we cross through that 800 foot a minute boundary then we will we'll probably start to spin and, and I don't mean spin like oh my god we're gonna fall out of the balloon but we'll just like if we held the turning bit.
and, and that can be really disorienting because as you're dropping, you have a sense of where you are, but then the balloon's rotating and you've lost it. It's like, man, where, where am I? And so that spinning can be disorienting. Um, somewhere around about 900 feet a minute to 1,000 feet a minute, then we'll start to see the balloon kind of dish in on the throat and the throat will start to close a little bit. It, in this balloon, it will never get closed. Um, just by design, like the cabling and everything. The mouth on this balloon is so massive that it just, you, I mean, if the throat closed, you have significantly larger problems. Um, and so, so what's happening there is as the balloon gets cold, and it gets soft, then what happens is anytime we go through a shear, it's going to kind of cave in the side of the balloon. The important part about that is to just look and watch how it behaves, but also to note when it is time to burn, that you want to look up and make sure that you have a clear throat to burn into. Right. Don't um, be hitting fabric. Exactly. Um, now, there are times that we have seen very extreme descents where people haven't had fire and they finally get it lit and they do burn, but the throat is so closed that they do burn it. Um, in general, getting heat into the balloon is more important than saving the fat in that kind of an emergency situation. Um, especially because if you, you'd have to work really hard to burn through cable and load tape, especially enough to damage the integrity of the balloon. So in an emergency situation, if you feel like, man, I gotta get heat in this or I'm gonna drill the ground at a thousand feet a minute, that's where stuff breaks. Absolutely burn through the fat. Um, it's, it's heartbreaking. Um, but again, the again, if it's dished in one side, like you're coming through a shear or something like that, you're still going to have 80% of the balloon that's intact. All of these balloons are so over-engineered, it's totally fine. Um, because my rule of thumb is if you can slow the descent down to about 600 feet a minute before you hit the ground, you'll be fine. 600 feet a minute... 600 feet a minute is bone jarring. It's like, oh, oh, man. 600 feet a minute is typically where we start to see wrists, ankles, elbows, that kind of thing, just because you're staying in the air, people aren't wearing good shoes, whatever. But everybody crawls out of the basket and you say, oh, man, that was a crazy ride. More than 600 feet a minute, about 800 feet a minute is where you start to see real injuries, broken arm, broken leg, that kind of stuff. Um, at a thousand feet a minute is where the balloon integrity starts to break down. You might break holes coming in, uh, and you might start to have things like head injuries. Because what happens is you want to get in that sort of low squat position, but a lot of times people's legs aren't strong enough to handle a thousand feet a minute. And so then you're going to get a lot of this kind of movement. And so then you're going to get I mean, my shoulder injury. Am I going to hit a head on the tank? So 1,000 feet a minute is really dangerous. Um, it but, sounds dangerous. But 600 feet a minute actually isn't that bad. Um, and so, you know, we've done a couple landings at 600 feet a minute. And it's just like, well, okay, I wouldn't want to do that every day. But, uh, and so I think it's really valuable to just think about what are my boundaries of managing safety? And if you feel like, man, it's taken forever and a day to get to the burner lit, and you're screaming towards the ground, and, and you can get some heat into it, and you can slow that thing down to 600 feet a minute. I mean, because it'll, it'll, if it's twisted here, it's gonna burn through that and then put heat up in the rest of the room. Right, line. and typically you won't see, you won't see the throat close to the degree that it's twisted closed. You'll see it close in the sense that it's caved in closed. Okay. Um, likely to burn two or three panels worth as it's caved in and you can kind of orient your burner to it you know that kind of a thing and then if you can like, like say if you can get that descent slowed to about 600 feet a minute and you sort of burn like hell all the way to the ground shut your fuel off and then vent 600 feet a minute is not that bad. in that emergency situation you hope you get lucky and you got something landable below you and uh, you're not going to get any obstructions or anything exactly 
So the idea of the terminal velocity descent as a training exercise is to get a feel for how the balloon's going to behave so that you're not experiencing it that first time right. if you didn't have an emergency. Right. All right, so I'm almost at my limit. 10 to... Okay. That's awesome. I've buried pretty heavily away from that 400. It's amazing how difficult it is to hit, especially a rate that high. Um, when you think about a rate of, first of all, by the way, I, I think let's just pause here at 10,000. I think that's perfect. Let's okay. hold fixed at 10,000. I can't Stay quite level. see it very well. Yeah, because right now we have to go and do north at eight knots. I mean, this is this is about ideal, right? Okay. Um, just keep the balloon warm. Yeah, exactly. Just kind of keep it straight and level. Uh, we're, we're tracking real nice. I'm actually looking back to. I think this is the highest I've been line for sure yeah that's what i was thinking too and i when i was looking at the forecast it's like man it's a great day to go high um, and here's the launch site you see these two balloons that are standing up here at least i see one standing up i don't see the second okay so what i'd like to do Just take five minutes. Let's trade places. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's my balloon. Okay. Um, you're the passenger. I'm going to rotate a little bit so that I can look at my instruments without staring into the sun. Tell me a little bit about where we are on fuel. Um, I've been burning off of this one. Okay. You just burned off of this one. Okay. I've only burned off this one a couple times. And these two are close. Two are close. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm going to fly for a bit. Okay. With absolutely no purpose other than... Take a break, man. Look around. Okay. We're at 10,000 feet. Above a Class C airspace. The airport under construction. Five balloons in the air. Just chill out. Enjoy it. Okay. It's really pretty. It is. This is probably my favorite time of year uh, with everything being so green and so bright. The mountain's got just a little bit of snow on it. Um, and uh, you know, it's, I think the only time prettier, frankly, is in the dead of winter, right after one of those real big snowstorms and everything's got that clean blanket of snow and the, and the real deep blue skies. But I just think this is such an amazing view. And so then from sort of a tourist perspective, this is an opportunity for you to pick up your phone and we're gonna do one of those uh, those panoramic pictures. Okay. First picture in flight. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna get ourselves ascending just a tad, roughly level, but ascending a little bit, I'll say, Mostly just not cold, right? And then I'm gonna say, okay, are you ready? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna shoot one direction and I'm gonna spin the balloon. Just do video? Uh-huh, yeah, no. Do your panoramic uh, do do photo. Uh, pano? Yep. Okay. And what that'll do is you'll see this line. It'll it'll build a 360 degree view as we spin the balloon okay. into a single panoramic photo. And like I say, your key is just focus one direction and I'll spin the balloon under you. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. All right, so we're climbing about 100 feet a minute. I'm going to open up that turning vent. Go I for it. Yep. Way, okay. Go for it. And now I'm going to burn a little bit. So although the turning vent is not an effective vent, it does lose some heat. So you gotta just be cautious of it. Now you got a 360 degree view. Awesome. So 
that's a good little trick you can do with passengers. Yeah. Oh, it is. And so like the nice thing is I know that we're on video, and so I can hang on that turning vent and give a nice 360 view. And that's an amazing piece of the video to just slow down and say, hey man, let's look at this video. It's really cool. I enjoy that a lot. So I held that turning vent open a little bit more, but primarily because I want the balloon facing roughly this direction. Okay. Partially because that's sort of my default. I want to be viewing this area and because I want to be able to look at my instruments without looking in the side. Okay. So if I had a second turning vent right now, I would just pull that turning vent a little bit. You. Just uh, leave it because we have so much momentum, we're going to keep going. Hot Air 74008, uh, can you tell us the ground noise? I'm currently showing calm. Copy that. Hard to plan a flight on calm winds, isn't it? I can imagine. Uh, Springs Tower 74008, I'm planning to initiate a uh, quick descent all the way to the deck. We'll see what's down there. We'll let you know what we're talking about. Hot Air 78, Roger. Thank you. Okay, so we've been hanging out here about 10,000 feet, and so we're about to initiate this terminal velocity descent. The way we're going to initiate it is by doing nothing. Okay. Okay. Because um, you want the balloon to cool down. Right. Because now in a in a sort of a I'll say an onboard fire, you might vent, you might initiate, but even then, it's usually not necessary. First of all, because if you're dealing with a fuel leak or an onboard fire or a medical emergency. At this altitude, the balloon will cool fast enough. Initiating with a vent is not necessary, okay. and you're probably busy dealing with other things. And so the scenario is, let's trade places again. Okay, it's your balloon, okay. you are the pilot. And so, as of right now, in this moment, uh, we're 28 minutes into the flight. Uh, what I'd like to say is that we are just now starting a descent and all of a sudden, you reach up to burn, and there's no pilot light, okay? okay. Something's gone wrong. Your, you, your fuel valve is broken, your pilot light's out, whatever. And now you are starting to experience the, I really wish I had fire, okay? Now, we're not gonna burn, and we're not gonna burn for a really long time. Okay. So let's just watch our descent rate and see what's going on, okay? Definitely picking up. So what I'd like you to do is pay attention to, how tempted are you to burn? Right now, not so much. Okay. Without I think because I'm so high up still. Right, and so we're crossing about almost 650 feet a minute. Okay. The instruments are beeping at us. That's good. That keeps us awake. Okay. Right. Are you sleeping? Nope, I'm not. Right. We're, we're not sleeping. <laughs> right. So, stress management. This is the time to just say... <sighs> We've got a lot of time. Okay. we got a lot of time. We're at 10,000 feet. The right. airport's at 6,000 feet. We got 4,000 feet to work this problem. That's a lot. Okay. Okay. So notice how we're now at about 700 and oh, about 700 feet a minute. We're starting to see some rotation. Yeah. Okay. Now it's, start, it's starting to feel a little wonky. And, yeah. It's like man, it's kind of wandering That's around. Right. Okay. But the balloon's like still that. pretty in shape, pretty solid, pretty stable, right? Yeah. Yep, 800 feet a minute. We're not experiencing any significant shears. We're still going to the north northeast. Aha, here's that first shear. Okay, right there. So we're at 830 feet. Let's watch what that shear does to pull out. So far, not a lot, right? Not a lot. Okay. We're a 
home to the Air Force Base. We know that's a safe place to be. Now you can feel that rotation starting to pick up a little bit. Yeah. And uh, now is that tending? Man, I'd really like to slow this down a little bit. Right? Right. Yeah. The ground's starting to feel closer. Yeah. Feeling things in the basket. And it's creaking a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Spinning a little faster. Yeah. So if you had to guess, let's imagine this emergency scenario and you get the burner lit and you sort of go into that burn like hell mode. How long do you think it'll take to recover a descent like this? Uh, 600 to 1,000 feet. Okay. So then let's set ourselves a limit of 7,000 feet. We will not let the balloon fall any lower than 7,000 feet before we start running. Okay. Oh, did you feel that? Yeah. It's starting to wander a little bit. The balloon's pivoting a little bit. Now, from the from an outside perspective, the balloon is spinning, and you're starting to see the basket spin out on the rotation. Right. Okay. Okay. I can't even tell that. No, nope, you can't. The real temptation to start to get low in the basket. Okay. Now we just hit a thousand feet a minute. Okay. Do you feel that drop in your stomach? I do. Yeah. Yeah. A thousand feet a minute's really fast. Okay. Okay. Now notice how the balloon behaves. We're starting yeah. to see a dish it's over here. Cave in a little bit. Real soft on the sides, that kind of thing. Okay. okay. When we get to 8,000 feet, I'd like you to relight your burner. Obviously, it's still lit. It's right. going great. These burners are hard to get out. At 8,000 feet, I'd like you to start to recover and recover like your life depends on it. Okay. okay. We're at 8,000 feet and go for it. put it back into an ascent. Into an ascent? Right, we want to stay Stabilize. negative or neutral and that's it. Okay. Now, notice that we started at 8,000 feet. You're at 7,500 so and you're level. Feet. So it doesn't take that much. And you took pauses. Right. Imagine if your adrenaline's really pumping, man, you'd be no on both burners like no way in hell am I, I stopping. I always burn. feel wrong to just continuously burn like that. I, I feel think like it's good. Stop for a second. It allows the balloon to refill and breathe. It's much better, you get much better combustion. So that couple of seconds pause is excellent. Dang In a up. stress environment, you won't have that. It's leveled out now. Less than 500 feet. That was awesome. We went from 1,000 feet a minute to zero in what seems like no time at all, 500 feet. And, and that will carry out no matter my altitude? Uh, the balloon performs poorly at this altitude in Colorado Springs. Okay, so it's even better down there. If we get down to the deck, if we are flying at sea level or something like that, it's gonna it's gonna pound, stop like a dime. Okay, so watch your tank there. I ran you almost dry, yeah. specifically to make it more difficult for you. Okay. You can swap that whenever you're ready. Awesome, Dave. It sounds super scary. Like, oh my gosh, we're gonna let this thing fall out of the sky. And it is, because it spins, it wobbles. <laughs> and it's not that big a deal. And so a couple things to learn from that is in an emergency situation, especially if you've got altitude, you got time to work a problem. I mean, we can sit here and have a conversation. Imagine how long it takes you to light a burner. Right. Not very long. So, that's the big learning. The balloon gets weird, but not unstable. You got plenty of time to solve a problem. And I think the big learning, and something that after you get your certificate, you'll practice quite a bit, is how can I push the balloon closer to its performance limitations in order to drive it to where I want to be? Because, you know, you think about, oh man, I need to be down there and get that left turn. Well, vent, you got 800 feet, man. Then, then start screaming down, burn like hell, and you can stop it. And these balloons will perform way better than we think they will. You know, we sort of start that training with the attitude of, well, 200 feet a minute, man, that's it. It's like, no, you can push these things routinely I mean, we 800 feet a minute up. We could have went more than 1,000 there, huh? 
Uh, well, that, they're not heavy enough. Oh yeah. And then there's also a limitation too on this balloon, right? Like I think the limitation's 1,200 feet a minute. And we're really physics limited. I mean, you're going to get so much drag on the envelope that you just you can't go any faster. If we had a third passenger today, we, could have gone up. we probably would have gotten up to about 1,100. Uh, when Aaron and I tested this balloon, we had a, we had a passenger in this. We were able to get to 1,100 feet, uh, and it's still about five, six hundred feet to recover. Yeah, I think it's six hundred. Okay, so now we're over the Air Force. Base. We've been over the Air Force Base for a while. We're approaching the tower, um, so we're right between the parallels. Okay. Now we think about parallels being safe space here. We can put planes on either side of the right. We can neglect this airport or this runway today. Right. They've already used both of these other two runways today. So currently, I would say we're in a position that someone could launch under us, which he is right now. You right. see him lining up. So that means that we should maintain altitude so that we don't screw his approach up right. or his departure. I think this is cool. So the biggest concern we have here is we've got to stay clear of this runway um, because it, with that the only big runway the airport has to use if we start to infringe on that then that would get irritated right but we're good right here right? yeah and we're currently going uh, 170 we're almost going to track right over the terminal and right down the center so from my perspective i think you're right to just cruise right down the airport and get away from there Get out of their way and then figure out my next move. Yep. Because if we feel like the if we feel like we're getting enough left that we're impinging on that runway, we should probably get up higher to get out of their way. But they only need about 500 feet to land a plane under us, and even that's conservative. But oh, that's I really. Glad we did that. First time to 10,000. Uh, I was actually was 11 one time with Patrick. Oh, but nice. As a passenger. Yeah. But first time as a pilot that high. Yeah, and it's always funny because people think that that terminal is going to be some scary. big scary well, I was, event. I was expecting it to. I was, you know, expecting to be having to hang on. Right. And, and it can be more adventuresome than that if you hit a big shear in the middle. Because you're, you're going down through it fast enough that you do get quite a bit of tip. Um, but in a round balloon like this, it, they, you'll blow through those shears quick enough. It's not that big. And so when you start to hear people um, making descents, you'll hear conversation around competition, around, oh, I did an 800 foot a minute descent. Okay, that's extreme. That's a lot, and you need to be paying attention. But uh, but it's not anywhere near the performance limitation of the balloon. Right. Especially probably in a racer, too. Exactly. A racer will go up and down 1,600 feet a minute. It's crazy. It, it's, it be... it's extremely uncomfortable. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine so. Because in, inherently racers are less stable, right? They're in, they're streamlined. They're designed to go up and down fast, but they do tend to pivot a lot more. And uh, I don't I don't like those kinds of speeds. You go into a shear, and that's uncomfortable to me. Um, but the balloon stays stable. The throat stays open, and so. And what's interesting is in the in the competition realm, there's this sense if you're real high and you want to be low and you go fast, that I should let the balloon cool down. You don't actually. You want in a competition. You want to start a quick descent and then be puffing the balloon all the way Let's down. Keep it warm. Keep it firm oh, because yeah. the firm shape has less friction. Okay. 
um, and it just allows you to recover faster. But it'll fall faster if you keep it warm. Okay. Um, it's a real science. Um, and man, guys that have it, they are dialed in, and it's so fun to watch. Um, but I also do find a lot of the competitors are using high-sided baskets, especially because then they know they're in. They're in right. um, spinning and wobbling and all that kind of thing. And so, I really like the high side of the basket too. It's more awkward to get in and out of. Who cares? But, uh, <laughs> I like the seat belt too. Me too. Been that close to the tower before? No. These guys are amazing. Aren't they? they are nice. We are so lucky to have a tower like this. We are. The more I just read about just the different roles and stuff, and we are pretty lucky. And then I see other people come here are nervous about talking. I'm really appreciative of I have to do it regularly. Yeah. visiting pilots with you know a thousand hours and I've been a commercial pilot and I'm like how do I talk to the airport? It's like, really? <laughs> particularly tuned into the aircraft radio today okay because I want to know the air the air patterns and so for example he's using 3-1 quite a bit right, right. for these uh, their uh, Air Force cadets there's two fast track planes out here uh -huh. they're both Air Force trainers and so he's running them on on the big runway and on the little runway and just swapping them in and out um, and uh, Frankly, if there's anyone around me that I want as an Air Force instructor, yeah. <laughs> flying planes around me, I'm comfortable with that. Because you know they know what they're doing. So looking at those ripples on the water, mm -hmm. can you tell what direction the wind's blowing? Uh, it looks to be to be fairly calm, generally towards the south, but it actually looks like it's almost swirling a little bit, like it's maybe gone calm around the lake. Okay. Because I know landing, you know, gets a little less and less more to the right we go. It does, yeah. and. Uh, so in terms of landing opportunities, well, I would like to land in the plague field. But okay. Is that the plague field right there behind those houses? It is. Yeah. We have accessibility to there. Okay.
for the number 10. I think when we, I think if, if we drop down, I think we'll actually accelerate. Okay. I think we're gonna go a little quicker. Um, so we're gonna need maybe a little more room. Yeah, what I was debating is, uh, There's a couple of options here. I mean, we've got a lot of options. First of all, it's wide open, right? right. But we could we could drop down and kind of scoot straight south and land in this sort of north of Grumman area, land on the north side of the lake in that open, accessible area. Okay. We can't get into the lake area, of course. Right. Um, if we do get a left turn, which I keep anticipating, but I'm not seeing as I, as I spit over the side, we could potentially get as far over to the school, but I don't think we can get that far. Okay. But could we get to the corner of Fontaine and Powers, you know, go over the corner of the lake and get to that one? We might get that, because that feels close, right? Right. And I do anticipate a little bit quicker on the ground. Like eight or so, nine maybe? Uh, I, I'm thinking maybe quicker than what we have. I think we're gonna go through a layer that is like 12. Okay. But then I think once we get to the ground, it's gonna be really cold. Um, Again, that's one of those things where you want to do a, a steady descent and then arrest it at the last minute. In terms of obstacles that don't belong here, notice this yellow crane. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's new. So if we were to, to descend, let's say we wanted to land in north of Britain, that crane would be our biggest okay. something to be aware of. So, you know, frankly, we've been flying for... flying for about 45 50 minutes um, if it were me I want you to decide what you're comfortable with if it were me we're clear of the approach into the runway we're clear of that other runway I would actually initiate a, <clears throat> a steady descent all the way to the deck and I would plan to land right right on the other side of that crane okay super easy open accessible if we get a little left turn we know that's good we get a little right turn that's good and if something happens and it's fast and we bail out we've got room um but that's going to require some venting um it may be venting but the key is getting all the way to the deck early rather than just you know slow slow goes like here's joe he's moving uh, not super fast so that's what I didn't anticipate. Looks like maybe six or eight kind of thing. So, so vent and get down to about, go down about 500 feet. Or is that 265? Right? What is this? Is about 59, 5800 right here? The dirt here is about 59, yeah. And so you're already starting to drop a little bit. I Frankly, I just let it cool. It cool okay. But the key is let it cool all the way to the ground rather than that sense of, oh, I should catch it because there's nothing out in front of us. Okay. We're not causing a problem with the airport anymore. Okay. And then of course we've got these hazards, right? We've got light poles yeah. and buildings and the crane. We know there's no power lines out here, luckily. That's great. I mean, I can go ahead and short per oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Keep it warm because you don't want to get it right. Behind you. But now you feel that wind in your back. Here's yeah. that acceleration layer. And I think I don't know this, but I think it will calm down on the ground. And if it doesn't, we can continue on. Okay? Or not, it's totally up to you. But see how we're picking up speed now? We've gotten to 16. Yeah. And what felt like a long ways away, we're eating up. And you just let me know if you're going to land, if you're going to fly on. I think I'm going to try to land. Okay. Get down closer to the ground. Yeah. Oh, and you feel that wind yeah. in your face? That's encouraging, isn't it? That'll slow us down. I'm scanning the crane is the only thing. Yeah. And you see it's two parts of a crane do, with a yeah. flag on top. Murphy's Law says we're going to head straight towards that right. flag. I feel like I need to... Probably level out. Um, should I get clo closer yeah, to the ground? Yeah, you're already pretty leveled out. I mean, you're only dropping about 75 feet a minute at this point. 
there's a little bit of that left turn. Yeah. Now we, I think this road right here, I think Scott has access onto that road and on the little left hand road. Okay. So I think that, again, the crane is the hazard. Right. We're going to be outside of the military fence. Um, but I think this whole, this uh, first green field looks really good. I think the deeper we get into the field, the more difficult it is. Right. So I'm thinking just as soon as I clear the crane and stuff, just get as close to the road as I can. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're way left of the crane now. So here's our blue building. That's, you know, that's a bit of a hazard, but I mean, you got a nice steady descent. So if you're thinking, you know, what's my biggest obstacle? Right? The crane over here, but we're yeah. moving left. Yeah. Light poles Light over poles. here. But, but you got a nice steady descent. You can be right in the middle of that green field. Your temptation in this will be to overburden. Yeah, and I think I just did a little bit. That's right, you got tons of time. Holes over there to the left of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah good holes here. Um, and so now I, I feel like I'd like to be descending a little bit. We got this pole in front of us that is our, our clear hazard. So vent a little? No, I wouldn't. Okay. But just be, be cognizant of I'd like to be a little bit. Right, so don't burn, don't burn. Because that pole is the only thing you've got to keep your eyes on. Overburned a little. Yep. Get yeah, them okay still. Okay. And you said near the road. Are you looking at this little east-west road? Yeah. Okay. I, should, can I vent now? You can. Yeah. To get. To just, I feel like I'm climbing a little. Get ahead of it. Get ready for landing. Get in your landing position. Coming in a little fast, it feels like. Okay, you plan to lay it down or keep it standing? Uh, I'd like to keep it standing if I can. Okay. But it looks like I might be laying it down. Backwards. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, we're coming in about eight miles. I don't see any hazards on the road at all. A little puff.
Are you venting again or no? If you're cold enough, I'm just going to get scooped into him. Nicely done, man. It, it feels so weird being turned the wrong way. It does, yeah. Now notice that once you got that scoop in the wind, it's a lot more stable. Just the gears pushing, pushing up in there. Yep. Did you see what our speed was at when we were landing? I think it was eight. Eight. So now, of course, balloons don't like to be on the ground, so it's going to sit here and rock. We could lay it down. We can keep it standing until we hear from Scott. I know he's... I saw him. I thought right near us. So we could probably go ahead and lay it down, huh? Okay, you want to? Yeah, so... Okay. Start getting bounced around. Sure, let me grab the crown line here. I'm going to get you turned around a little bit more straight here. You good? Yep. Okay. It's all you. <laughs> 